So I'm going to introduce our Duff Factory. Um, it's basically what we did at Kangroot. Kangroot is a, a company that um, only does open source, pretty much. That doesn't mean that we don't integrate with non-open source, but we do it. It's been alive for 20 years. Uh, still have the original uh, system engineers there, so it's pretty cool. Um, what we mostly do is architecture, strategic advice, uh, bringing companies up to speed with new technologies, helping that out. We, have, of course, have 24-7 in coaching. But that's the company stuff. Let's start with what we're doing. So basically, um, this started out as a personal itch. Uh, everybody here probably used console and nomad dev mode and then wanted to do something more and had to start being, configuring things, and then things went wrong, and there was no way to easily do it. So. I wanted basically a runtime environment that I could spin up fast, build out, and have full observability. I didn't want to go to my NOMA tasks, then to the allocations, and start looking at logs there. I wanted to see all my logs together or everything. Then I wanted to see metrics immediately, because when you start developing on something, you want to spin it up fast, test it out, break it down, and do it again. So. The cost of, of doing this, if you do it manually, you're looking at about two hours to set up everything, manual configs, forward your DNS, set up IP tables on your VMs, whatever. I wanted to get it done fast, so I automated it. So what were the requirements that I had? For me, it was get it up fast. It has to be fast. Within the half an hour, if I can, as soon as it, it has to work on ARM, it has to work on Intel. I just want to be able to use it. Um, I didn't want to worry about SSL encryption, logging, and all that. It had to be there. It had to be configured, and I don't want to do it. And it didn't exist. So let's try it out. And we had a few questions then. Because, yeah, you can want something, and you have your requirements, but then you have to make the choices. What are we going to use? What are we going to use as orchestration? Is it open source? Um, is it complex? How can I automate that shit? Oh, sorry, uh, that, that stuff. All that uh, things I had to uh, answer. And I found my answers. I'm going to go through the main ones, not all of them, of course. So orchestration, it was easy. It was Terraform, Ansible, Puppet, Chef, Salt, whatever. I took three of them. For me, it was Ansible. It's easy to install. Um, it's really easy to learn. And it allowed me to do it within VMs and within bare metals. And it gave me the biggest flexibility that I have. Of course, I could go cloud native only. And then I would go for Terraform or Pulumi if I would. But it would not solve my problem, because I'm on the road a lot, and I just want to run it up locally. No Terraform. And the second thing was the runtime. Kubernetes, K3S, Nomad, uh, Rancher, which is a, or OpenShift, were all too heavy, all thing. The only thing that really helped me out was Nomad. It was fast up, a single binary, easy. Of course, K3S or Minikube is also simple and done. But then again, I wanted to be able to have multiple nodes and not only one node. And if you do it on your local laptop, install Nomad local, then you have one node. No integration. You don't see what happens when a node goes out. You, don't, you can't test that features and all that. So chosen stack, Nomad as runtime, console. We have traffic as ingress. Um, we scrape our configs uh, with Prometheus, which gets the information of what to scrape from the console catalog. The same for Promptail. It looks at the console catalog and scrapes the config. Uh, the defaults are set up. If you want to change it, just add a tag or a label to it and to your service, and it will change that one. And of course, we have Grafana and Loki for uh, monitoring. So how do we architect that? So I'm showing Raspberry Pi 4s here. It's actually the stack which I developed it on. I didn't develop on my laptop the, the source code that you can find on GitHub. Um, only added the local VMs after it worked on my Raspberry Pi cluster. So I have a cluster, six Raspberry Pis. I set up three master nodes, three controller nodes, uh, three worker nodes. I should fix that. And all the master nodes have Nomad native, have Docker native, have console native, Grafana Loki native, Promptail native, and Traffic is runs in um, um, the runtime. Oh, uh, Promptail as well. Um, sorry, the worker nodes only have, where am I? Only have the client, Docker, of course, native, console agent, and Promptail. So how does it really run? Ansible orchestrates, sets up the runtime stack, and then starts setting up the things inside Nomad. 
So Minio is used as my Loki backend. Loki needs an S3 backend to really run nicely. Um, uh, traffic, of course, runs as uh, the proxy, ingress proxy on the master nodes only. And then Prometheus runs inside the environment as well. So the versions, if you're interested, I think they're up to date. Um, no, actually, I think Nomad is already 1.3. I should update that. Um, and then this is how it looks, basically. So once you build it out, you have a Nomad that's run up with a data center. Um, if you run it locally, it's going to be molecule tests. Uh, if you, this one was pictures from my RPI deployment, so it was Sijo, which is my nickname. And you have all your services in Grafana. You have your services immediately uh, running in Nomad. And as you can see, the smallest part on the right, you have traffic, a tag there, traffic, that says it should give you a bit more. So how does it set up? In traffic, you have your routes that are configured. Of course, not everything is configured. I don't want anyone to have access to my menu, for example, from outside. So it only shows my Grafana, shows which URLs it's available on. Um, the ping is needed for the API and internal checks. And so how do you test this? How do you actually use it? For example, I have it running on my local laptop now. Um, I provided two molecule scenarios uh, initially. There's a second branch that does it with libvirt. The first branch is with VirtualBox. Uh, we will deploy or a Rocky VM, five Rocky VMs, or five Ubuntu VMs. Uh, there's a minimal inventory that's already configured, pre-configured for you, but of course it's my URL. And uh, it will set up the whole stack. It will use um, the internal DNS. It will set up uh, IP tables on all the instances. Uh, so that on all the instances where console runs, so that you basically could you configure your systemd on your local machine to forward directly into that system. Now, for when you run this, it is you'll see it's very minimal. We don't have a full test suite. So Molecule is used for testing Ansible, but I haven't tested it full. Um, I still need to merge the RPI. Uh, what I'm waiting for is actually new RPIs to test it on, because I don't want to destroy my production environment now, which runs on my RPI cluster. And then once it's done, I can merge it in. Um, the next steps are going to be the full MTLS support. Um, the, basically, I'm going to try to do the surface map mesh in there. And if you guys saw the talk of Nick Jacobs, I think Jacobson yesterday, with his um, balancing tools and, and his splitter and the auto deployment tool. Um, actually, going to try to implement that here as well with his code, of course. I'm not going to rewrite it. Authentication, authorization, we still need. And of course, things that you want to do. Right? Um, there's, of course, it's on GitHub. I, I think I had it, uh, the link up here. Ask issues, set up issues, ask questions, what do you want and not are. And then, um, Next, we also provide it as a service within the company um, to our customers, so it's already used. And we set up then Vault in there, um, but it runs on Azure at this point. You will see there's an Azure branch where you can find the code for most things. So basically, we allow our customers to spin it up. We spin it up for them, and then Vault is integrated immediately. Um, and we're in the progress of working out the automation for Boundary. That will take a bit. Um, of course, this is done as a side project. It's not my main job in the company, so it takes some time to get done. So I think I have time left, so I wanted to show you basically how it works on my machine, if I can get my mouse there. Nope. It's on the right side, of course. So this is my current Nomad running. So as you can see, I run um, Nomad Service Console. On my local laptop, I set up systemd to forwarded to my main node. You can see uh, right now I just have traffic, Grafana, Prometheus, Minio. Um, I have my node set up. Can I make that smaller? Here we go. So I have my five nodes. They have an internal IP. Um, cluster one has most of the services, apparently. Um, oh, no, only Loki and the standard ones. Um, the services are provided here, where you can see the different tags, for example, for Grafana, which I want to have available outside. If I go to my tags, you will see that, um, oh, they don't list nicely. You have, you set up TLS is true, uh, I want HTTPS, that's my main domain, and uh, use the search resolver, 
resolver that I provided, which is pre-configured. You can rename that, of course, in your setup and, and change that. And basically, it configures my traffic automatically. Um, I'll make that smaller as well. Uh, where you can see the different routes, where basically this comes from the tags that you provided. It shows you the routes that it will listen on and the hosts, as nice that it does. You can also see it comes here from the um, console catalog as provider. This little logo means it's the console catalog. Uh, I'm, go. I'm not used to working like this. And well, the features you can see. We have the console catalog. There's an extra console, so you can also add services directly in a key value setup, and then it will ping it up as well. Right? If you manually want to just add another service that runs somewhere else, you can do that. Lastly, of course, if I tell you about Prometheus, I should show you what Prometheus scrapes and what it finds. That's a bit too small. So you can see it gets the metrics from different jobs. It gets the metrics from S3, which is Minio. The source is Nomad. It will explain you everything, how it figured out and what the rules are. And then if you go to Loki, you will find that if you do your queries, so if I refresh this page, I hope it should work. And you will find my latest Grafana now, I think I did. I oh, know, traffic admin, you will see what's done. You can also see an error here about my key not being found in store, which is the CJ traffic key that I have not set up. So basically the setup, it allows you to immediately spawn a job. And if you spawn the job, it will just boot up and uh, you have your logging at one place. You can choose uh, what you want to log from. I don't know how good you are, whether you want to log, uh, look at jobs or hosts or file names or container names. And then you get your list of the different container names that you have. Want to see the Grafana logs, you just run your query and you'll get the logs. And it pre populates that for you. So there's nothing that you have to do configure anymore. So this is the setup. Um, I'm pretty short in time, apparently, which is good. Uh, and I'm pretty much done on this talk. I went a bit faster. I think I deleted too many slides. So any questions? I'll be here for another uh, for a bit, and you can just come over and ask questions.